Please stand. <clears throat> I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last, he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. 
for none of us has life in himself. And none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Please be seated for the welcome. Welcome to St. Anne's Episcopal Church in North Billerica, Massachusetts. Welcome to all of you here with us, and welcome to those watching online, perhaps from as far away as Papua New Guinea, where one of Jonathan's daughters lives. I am the Reverend Jennifer Beale, and I am the priest in charge here at St. Anne. Because Carol Ann Eastman Mackenzie was a woman of many passions and many connections, I thought I might name just a few of the places from where you all come. So if you are from St. Anne's, and I didn't warn you ahead of time, would you just raise your hand so that people can know to ask you for instructions to the restroom or any other questions you might have? <laughs> By the way, those are down that hall and on the right-hand side. And if you are relatives who have come from Vermont, raise your hand. If you're relatives who have come from Connecticut, raise your hand. If you're relatives who have come from Cape Cod, raise your hand. <laughs> and other family who I don't know where you come from? Yay! <laughs> uh, folks here from the Chelmsford Bible Church. Yes, yes, thank you, at least two of you. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. 4-H, Carol's love of horses and teaching. Look at you, oh, wonderful. And Bill Ricca High School. Yes, yes. Are there any other places in Carol's life? Oh, Curcio. Curcio, yes. <laughs> and I love, there are many of you who have multiple of these relationships. Any others? Um, I, yes? Oh, welcome. I believe that is the parish where Jonathan was priest during the time of their courtship and wedding? Yes. Wonderful to have you all here with us. Um, we have some new bulletins. So while we stand, if you wish, and sing the opening hymn, make sure you um, get the attention of our usher, Dottie Callahan, who will be walking up and down with more bulletins. I welcome you to stand, if you wish.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Carol. We thank you for giving her to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Jonathan, her family, and her friends in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be re revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is it at that night? Hand of God, who indeed intercedes, and intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? With hardship or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. No, in all these things that are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything, or anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. We'll now read uh, Psalm 23 uh, responsively, half verse by half verse. The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And now I invite reflections from family. And it looks like Mark will go first. Welcome, Mark. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. Um, beautiful day, and I'm sure you're all weary of traveling. But here we are. Uh, my mother was the definition of a free spirit. She was, um, as we all know, very busy woman. She lived hard, played hard, worked hard, all of the above. Um, just wanted to share a few stories with you. Um, being raised by my mother was uh, interesting, to say the least. <laughs> um, we were always going on long, strange trips uh, <laughs> with long drives or soaking wet trail rides or all kinds of wacky shit. But um, she instilled in me a great deal of things, uh, love, love one another being one of them. And that has been shown in spades here. It's unbelievable from last night. And today, thank you again. That's the part that really gets you, um, seeing how much she made an impact on everyone she touched. Um, I just want to thank her for that. And I, I had a wonderful childhood. And uh, as time goes on, you grow apart in ways. And uh, yeah, regret comes with all of us, I guess, a little bit, a little bit. But I can't look at it that way. And I have to enjoy the time we had together. And uh, Last thing is, one day we got a rowboat. I don't know why she had to have a rowboat, but we got a rowboat. And she always taking me to riding lessons and, like I said, strange things. So one day on the way to a riding lesson, we stopped at a pond and the rowboat was being launched, maiden voyage. Yay, I must have been six, seven, maybe, somewhere in there. We get out in the middle of the pond and the rain comes in like Madness. It's like, I think the world is going to end. The boat's filling up. <laughs> it's raining, 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 raining. Losing my shit. Crying like a little bitch. Ah! And my mother is rowing and rowing back to shore. And we're out there a ways. I look back, and she is calm as can be. Almost a grin on her face. Rowing that boat in horrible conditions back to shore. And that's the way she lived her life. Just went through good and bad. and. Uh, Love her to death, and thank you all for coming again. Oh. <laughs> I used to like to tease Mark. Uh, about the fact that he was one of the reasons that I married his mother. Uh, because in typical fashion, uh, when I called to reach her or when I came to pick her up for a date, she was often not there. More often than not, I would spend some time with him on the phone or uh, chatting while we waited her to come into the house or come downstairs. Uh, so uh, I figured if, if she could do that well uh, with a son, that she must be all right. A lot of my experience, especially my early experience with Char Carol, uh, really was involved with children. One of the things that she did and one of the impacts that she left was that she babysat, especially for friends, uh, particularly the, the uh, Duffies and the Donahues. Uh, and I have many memories of dealing with both of those children, but 
The story that I want to share with you uh, was a story about uh, having to do with one of the Duffy children who is no longer a child. She has children of her own now, Marlo. Carol had uh, told me in the fall we had been hiking together and climbing in the White Mountains, and she announced sort of late in the fall that uh, just so I knew uh, she wasn't going to be available later in the fall because once the snow came, she skied. And the implication was that, of course, she'd ski, and she, that was first, so I probably wasn't going to be able to fit into that. Uh, I made the mistake of saying, did I say I didn't ski? Uh, which was, wouldn't have been totally a lie, uh, but I hadn't done it frequently and certainly with modern uh, regalia in quite a while. Uh, she realized that, so her gift to me uh, was, uh, when we got into December, was uh, a, free, a free gift of one of the, they used to do this more often than they do now at ski areas in New Hampshire. Uh, they give you a free, free ski ticket and a free lesson and a dollar rental for your ski equipment. So as we were arriving, typically she was uh, looking after Marlo, and Carol had warned me uh, that sometimes Marlo was a little hard to, to manage or understand uh, at her early age. And so I was prepared for the worst. Uh, turned out it wasn't nearly that bad. Marlo, Marlo proved her totally wrong. But she did do something unexpected because we were riding along in the car. Uh, and this reminds us, probably our second semi-formal date. And Marla looked over at Carol and said, uh, so are you guys getting married? <laughs> Needl needless to say, uh, Carol got a little red, even for Carol. But the day continued uh, with each of us going in our separate ways. Carol uh, went off to ski and left me to learn how to do it properly. And... Uh, the ski instructor was talking to me and you know, asking what my aspirations were uh, in skiing. How good did I want to get? And I said, well, you see that woman in pink coming down the hill? Uh, can you get me good enough so I can keep up with her by this afternoon? <laughs> well, I presumed a lot. Uh, by afternoon, I was indeed on the slope with her. Uh, being back and forth, and in Carol fashion, she'd said, well, now, what you want to do, take your time on your turns, but uh, we're seeing uh, the 12 gifts of Christmas, and every time you get to the end of one gift, you turn. So I was dutifully going back and forth, you know, turning at the partridge in the pear tree, working my way down, and uh, managed to get to the bottom safely without any major falls or, or accidents. I spent the next several years trying to keep up with Carol because she gently assumed that, that, that you know, I'd gotten all I needed to know. And so we frequently were in uh, places where I learned uh, Carol's method of, of skiing, which was uh, if you're nervous or you're scared, just don't think about it. Charge right in. Over, the t over time, we got into, we applied that same method of learning, either teaching me teaching her or her teaching me to climbing in the White Mountains, where she climbed all 4,000 footers with me, uh, into riding, uh, where I gradually was indoctrinated into riding, and she kindly allowed me to ride her horse, who had trained so many, Wayne, who had trained so many people uh, that... He just sort of, you know, checked back constantly to see if you were all right uh, through, through the skiing. And we finally came to that point uh, in our life, and this was sort of in the wind down in a way, where I realized that I was catching up with her, and occasionally on skiing I was actually passing her. The thing, well, it wasn't because I was getting better, it was because she was slowing down. <laughs> But the point is that I rejoice always in that, in both aspects of that relationship, in the things we were able to give to each other, to teach each other and share, 
but also in the times when as Carol was pulling in her horns a little bit and thinking a little bit more about what was safe and what wasn't, that we're able also to rejoice in those things and move forward in those understandings. So as she entered into her last few days, uh, probably the last several years as she was winding down, uh, we still had a ton to share. And I'm grateful that when we were doing that, we had such good friends, such good support, and such wonderful people to be a part of our lives. And so today I thank you, like Mark, for being here to share this last episode. I'm sure she's already started a new adventure where she is, uh, and I wish them well as they try to accommodate and as she tries to get them organized. Uh, I have a feeling that things got a little wild in heaven this weekend. Thank you all. Are there any others who would like to offer a reflection? Hello, my name is Dave Nichols. I'm her nephew, and anything, everything Mark said is true. She was crazy in a good way. Um, she taught me how to ride, taught me how to ski, uh, and taught me that being on time wasn't really important half the time. Uh, I think yesterday was the thing, first time she, I've ever seen her on time for anything. Um, me and Mark are laughing about that. And uh, We used to drive around, we'd go to Mount Monadnock or wherever we were driving, and she'd always have to take the long way. It was, the journey was part of getting there, she'd always say, you know, and sing all these little songs. Songs that when you were a kid going, why is she singing this? <laughs> uh, what was one you said yesterday? I can't, I didn't remember it until you started singing it. But the other one she used to sing every time we drive by a cemetery, or she'd every time her hearse would drive by. She, Did you think you were going to die? She sing, <laughs> and we'd we that little smile on her face, you know, it was just hysterical. And she was always like that. She just always had a smile on her face. Um, she was, she was funny, <laughs> and I miss her. I'm gonna miss her. And like Jonathan said, yeah, good luck. <laughs> You're gonna need it. She, good luck keeping up with her. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name's Catherine Cantrell. I had the pleasure of meeting Carol at Great Brook Farm State Park when I had a job as a park interpreter there in 1994. I was the one that introduced Carol and Jonathan in 97 uh, on the mountains. And Carol was milking the cows in the barn when I met her. I'm so happy to hear more of her adventures uh, from her other people. And I also had the privilege to see her at the uh, campgrounds in Westford where she was 4-H and to know that she won 50-year honor from 4-H. who was such an am amazing woman. And I identified so much with her free spirit and uh, Carol Jonathan and I had the pleasure of climbing many 4,000 footers together in the White Mountains. So I was part of many of her adventures. I'm so honored. But I want to say that the last few weeks that, that I visited, I've never seen anyone with more grace as Carol had, who was an amazing woman. And I'm so grateful and honored to have been a part of Carol and Jonathan's life. To 
Good morning. I wasn't planning to speak, but I think it would be remiss to have this event go by without some of the other things that Carol has done. My name is Louise Donahue, and I've known Carol for a zillion years since I was a kid, and she was a volunteer at the 4-H Fair. My story began with Carol. We would share rides going up to camp for board meetings, and um, we, at one point, she was in need of additional um, part-time jobs, and I was in need of a babysitter. So she says, oh, would you mind? Would you consider me to babysit? I'm like, are you crazy? Of course I will. So Carol worked with me for five years, and it was a perfect situation. I needed flexibility, and so didn't she. She would need time to take care of her dad or visit some of her other relatives. Um, I feel really, truly blessed that Carol was part of my life and helped raise my kids. Um, she gave them an experience that you don't get in typical daycare, and they'll probably tell you the same. And she had them milking cows at the Great Brook Farm and at the Cranberry Bogs and horseback riding. So many different stories, um, so much love, so much happiness. And you couldn't ask more for that when you have your kids at home while you're working. From um, a camp point of view, she was an incredibly dedicated volunteer. She was on our board for over 20 years. She ran the horseback program for 20 years. And she was also our treasurer for 10. And those were the days there were no computers. It would take her a couple of months to do the year-end reports because everything was by hand. Um, anybody who knew her from camp would tell you how gracious she was. Calm and cool under pressure, sense of humor. She just always had the most incredibly positive attitude. And there are so many kids who benefited from her attention at camp. And she always had the most patience to work with children who were new to horseback riding, and she just made it fun for everybody. And closing, I will just say that um, she was uh, an incredible woman. I also skied with her several times. My last story would be that when Greg was little, he was about two years old, my husband volunteered to babysit so Carol and I could take off to go skiing. We were supposed to go to Sunday, we were supposed to go to um, Waterville, we just had a brand new snowstorm the, the day before, and we said, let's go to Killington. It's only an extra hour away. So we did a day trip to Killington midweek. It was the best ski day I think we, either one of us ever had, and it's a memory that I, I, I think about often um, back in the good old days. So again, thank you for allowing me to share, and um, it was a total pleasure having Carol in all of our lives. Morning, everyone. I'm Matt Marlowe. <laughs> Little one is a year, and he's home with dad, so I'm going to read something on Facebook that I posted when I found the news about Carol. Hopefully, I'll hold it together. Carol taught me how to horseback ride. She gave me lessons on her horses for many, many years. Whenever I fell off, she said, that's what makes a good rider. Cruises give you stories. She taught me how to ski at Ragged Mountain and Gunstock. She picked my brothers and I up at school. She milked cows for my parents. There's not many women that can milk cows, I'll tell you that. During 9-11, when my parents weren't able to fly home from a dairy meeting, they had to drive cross country from Idaho. Carol watched us. She also harvested cranberries for many seasons. I wish I could have been there with her with her last few days. I know she got to meet my son twice and loved it. She actually said to Jonathan, I want one. <laughs> she lightened up the room, even when I was a moody preteen and we would be in the car together and I just had hormones swimming around in my body and she'd just make a song and embarrass me to the point where I couldn't be angry anymore. She had no fear. I can remember galloping right behind UPS many, many times with her. She just, she sat in that saddle and just went. And she used to bring her horse, Domino, over to the farm, and I still have my horse. And we would ride, and I'd get so sore in the saddle and say, we got to stop. And she'd say, no, we're not stopping. <laughs> so just a few, uh, few little words for her up, upstairs. I hope they serve dessert first in heaven. The horses are 
The fields are filled with horses. I hope sunscreen isn't needed and there's never any bugs on the trails. And I hope the Ferris wheel runs all summer and they know how to dance no matter the tune. If not, you'll be sure how to show them. Most of all, I hope you know your love today and always. Giddy up, my friend. Let us stand, if you wish, to sing our gospel hymn, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own. And my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, 
Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. One of my favorite images of Carol is from just the past year. And it's from coffee hour after church on Sunday morning when she would sit beside her best friend from high school, Susan Corkum Kennedy. And the two of them would get telling stories about each other as teenage girls with crushes on teachers. That's the part that I remember. And they would just get, they, they'd prod each other. You know how best friends can do that? And the giggling that would ensue, the giggling, the laughter, the bringing in of everyone near them to the jokes that they shared, to the friendship they shared, to the love they had for each other. Loving each other just the way we here on Sunday mornings at St. Anne's watched Jonathan loving Carol in all the details of attentive care giving. There was so much love. There is so much love. So much love in her that I imagine that's why animals, why children, why all of us responded to her. And so love is my first characteristic to mention about Carol. The other, because I knew her for such a short time, only since 2020, so the characteristic that I named was directness. But now, after all your stories, I can see why. She lived her whole life being direct. There was something about the way she spoke that always seemed to go to the heart of the matter. And that's what I see in the eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, where he gets quite direct about the love of Christ, available to all who want to join this family, is a bond so tight and sure that it is impervious. It will not let anything through, not even a drop of water or a mist of doubt. There is nothing that can break the love of God in Christ Jesus for us. Carol knew that. For each of us here in this room, not even the death of a beloved. For she is still with God in Christ, just as she always has been, and so will we too. So can we too. Wherever you might find yourself, on whatever spiritual journey you name, whatever language you use, the same Jesus loves being the good shepherd who will come and find you no matter how or where you take cover, no matter what speed you might try to go, that good shepherd will come find you. There are many pastures, there are many waters in our lives, but restoration, 
companionship, nourishment are the goals of the shepherd of love for each of us. Let the shepherd love you and heal you, love you and challenge you, love you and sustain you now, forever, and for eternity. Amen. At a service of burial, we especially like to say the words of the Apostles' Creed as a reminder of whose we are and where we are going. If you wish, please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the judge of the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life of God. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, My name is Pastor Ryan from Chelmsford Bible Church. It's an honor and pleasure to be here as we remember Carol. She was a big part of our church for many years. Dear friends, it was our Lord Jesus himself who said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us pray then for our sister Carol, that she may rest from her labors and enter into the light of God's eternal Sabbath rest. Your servant, for she returns to you. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Carol. Wash her in thy holy font of everlasting life, and clothe her in her heavenly wedding garment. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Carol. May she hear your words of invitation. Come, you blessed of my Father. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Carol. May she gaze upon you, Lord, face to face, and taste the blessedness of perfect rest. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Carol. May angels surround her and saints welcome her in peace. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our sister Carol. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we love you and we thank you for your great love for us that is shown to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, we thank you for Carol and her life. We thank you that she 
walked in your ways, Jesus, showing love and grace to all she came in contact with. And we thank you for her spirit of adventure. And Lord, we thank you for all the lives that she touched along the way. Pray comfort for all of us here who are missing her and mourning her. We thank you that she is with you, Jesus. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of humankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Carol. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now to you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus our Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you all this day and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Be God. Alleluia, alleluia.